Welcome to the Common Man Football Show, and today's episode is the Tennessee Titans draft class. Starting with the first pick of the draft, Corey Davis. Uh, overall, when you look at him from a data perspective, he didn't do any uh, athleticism testing, so this kind of clouds his uh, projection to a certain extent. But the one thing that I can tell you is based on spring testing, uh, I ran his speed score for 209 pounds. And he came out with a 72.36 overall speed score, which is really good because the majority of all pro to pro bowl wide receivers had at least one athleticism score of 54 or higher. Uh, and Corey Davis at least has a speed score over 54. So he passes that when it comes to athleticism. When it comes to production, he had a 92.12 in terms of his uh, passing yardage market share which is five-time All-Pro level. Uh, Age-wise, he's 75.85 in terms of his age score, which is decent. Uh, and in general, I mean, he's a good pick. He's a really good pick. I don't, again, it's a little risky to take a guy top five when you don't know all the actual fact factuals about their athleticism. Uh, and also the fact that his strength of schedule for his production, and this is just the strength of schedule here, was kind of lackluster except for one year where it was a little bit closer to average in 2015 but I like his film and I think that you have a guy who can at least be a starting wide receiver for you it's, it's a little high but you have some positives here to, to, to go to with Corey Davis and there's enough things here to suggest that he could be an elite wide receiver or close to an elite wide receiver based on his market share production uh, the next up we have a Dory Jackson cornerback out of USC starting out with his production he had 83.66 in terms of solo tackle market share 68.90 in terms of pass deflection market share and the only issue that he has uh, is his pass deflection market share uh, it's the only area where he didn't meet high quality outcomes uh, in order to be a multiple all pro multiple pro bowl cornerback since the 1989 NFL draft class you have to have at least a 77 out of 100 pass deflection market share score and Adore Jackson only had a 68.90 so he misses the, uh, the quality marks in terms of that he also doesn't have elite arm length he doesn't have 32 inch arm length which is the go-to level for multiple all pro cornerbacks since 1999 he does have pro bowl arm length which in order to have pro bowl arm length you have to have above 30 inches so there's there's positives here with him. Uh, age wise, he's also 94.28 in terms of his age, 95.04 in terms of his overall production, which just takes into account the strength of schedule he faced with his other production marks. And athleticism wise, uh, he scored a 54.01 in terms of explosiveness, 75.02 in terms of speed, and 89.22 in terms of flexibility for his size. So he has above average explosiveness, above average speed, and near elite flexibility for his size. I think best case scenario, you have a starting cornerback when it comes to Dory Jackson. But I do think that there's some more things that you need to you know, figure out with him, I guess, when it comes to his overall projection. Then the next pick, we have Taewon Taylor, wide receiver out of West Kentucky. This is by far one of my favorite picks that the Titans made. Uh, he had an 87.95 in terms of his uh, passing yardage market share score, which is five-time All-Pro level. Uh, he had the similar age to Corey Davis with a 74.76 age score. He also is a tremendous athlete. He had a 79.74 in terms of explosiveness, 76.94 in terms of speed, and 95.87 in terms of flexibility for his size. He pretty much kind of tested similar to Corey Davis, like a smaller version of Corey Davis, uh, if you will, in a way. If, if you assume that Corey Davis was going to have a decent short shuttle three cone, and he also was going to have a, a decent explosion testing, he pretty much tested very similar to him. So, um, at least the style of wide receiver that they're looking for. And I think with these two picks, you have to, to really love this uh, for Marcus Mariota because he has two wide receivers that are really good route runners and that have decent overall athleticism traits and production so there's a lot of positives here when it comes to the titans draft when it comes to upgrading weapons around Mariota, and these are two weapons that i actually think will be effective in, in helping him uh, to improve and and, uh, and grow as a passer so i really like that pick uh, then we have Jonu smith 
tight end out of Florida International. Uh, he had a 98.30 overall production score in terms of passing yards market share, which is the highest for a tight end in this draft class. Uh, Age-wise, he also has a 94.13 in terms of age, uh, and which is young. And athleticism-wise, he had a 98, 96.69, excuse me, in terms of explosiveness, 87.57 in terms of speed, and 92.80 when it comes to flexibility for his size. Everything is pointing to positive things with Johnny Smith. With the exception of height, uh, he's he's not an inline tight end. Many stretch of the imagination because he's not six foot five, six foot six, and two hundred and sixty pounds. Uh, and those guys usually the H back tight ends are usually guys that the NFL has issues trying to figure out where to put them and how to play them and all this other sort of stuff. But at least with the Titans, I think there's a, a role for him to kind of develop and grow behind Delaney Walker. And then when Delaney Walker finally hangs up his helmet retires or kind of declines in age which he's getting to that point you know he's getting to that point where age kind of factors into things I think they kind of expect Joni Smith to kind of step in and develop behind him and then eventually take a spot down the road uh, but I, I like the Joni Smith pick I think he's a dynamic weapon as an H-back tight end I just think that you should temper your expectations because usually H-back tight ends uh, don't get the love that they deserve and they also don't get the accolades that they deserve either uh, so he's he's one of those guys like if Joda Smith came out in the 1970s he probably be a lot more popular than he would be today just in the modern NFL because in the 70s six foot two H Becky tight end 60s even six two H Becky tight ends were dominating the NFL back then but not anymore now it's the giant you know offensive tackle tight ends so I think but I think it's a solid thing then the next pick of the draft we get to is Jayon Brown, linebacker out of UCLA. Uh, he had an 82.37 in terms of solo tackle market share, 84.71 in terms of his uh, age for his, for you know himself. That was his age score, and great overall production too. This is just his schedule adjusted production here, and athleticism wise, he had a 40. But this is really the only area where he has issues is athleticism. He had a 40.52 in terms of explosiveness, 55.39 in terms of speed, and 39.20 in terms of flexibility for his size. Uh, that's not really getting it done when it comes to high quality outcomes. Uh, he has above average speed, so he can be a speed linebacker. That's exactly what it was on film. I think uh, uh, film-wise, I like Jayon Braun just from the perspective of a guy who has... You know, has some speed, can cover, and that was the thing. He was one of the better coverage linebackers in all of college football last year. Uh, he was very fast, very good in the seam and the slot areas. So I think he's going to be able. To, he's going to be a guy that's going to be able to contribute from day one. I just wouldn't exactly say that you have an elite player by any stretch of the imagination. So uh, I think he could be a starter, but I don't. I, I, his athleticism really caps his overall uh, upside, if you will. But I like the pick. Then the next the, the next pickup, we have Corey Levin, guard from Chattanooga. This is by far one of my favorite picks of the draft for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Athleticism-wise, he was 47.56 in terms of explosiveness, 74.70 in terms of speed, and 81.83 when it comes to flexibility for his size. Uh, he hits every single thing that you want in terms of a Pro Bowl guard, uh, in, in terms of athleticism as a power guard. Uh, he is a tremendous player, and, and this is the thing about the Titans. This is this is the pick that just made me go, wow, I, I love this draft because, you know, you get a guy in Corey Levin. You already have Taylor Lewan. You already have Quentin Spann, another guy that I was a big fan of, by the way, in that draft. I'm shocked that he didn't get drafted. Uh, ben Jones comes out. And, of course, you have Jake Conklin. That right guard spot after losing Chance Warmack is a spot that needs to be filled and I think Corey Levin can fill that spot and only that he has the athleticism to be a high quality player at that spot and if you just look at everything with Corey Levin from film wise every single time he played FBS competition he dominated every time he played FBS competition so I don't want to hear people going oh I think he's just gonna be a backup and he's gonna develop and you know we'll see what happens but most likely he's just gonna be eh. No, Corey Levin is going to be a beast. Corey Levin is going to be good. Uh, Corey Levin and Dan Feeney in particular and, and Corey Levin were guys that I was having trouble figuring out who to, who to put over 
I, I, I still went with Feeney, but like they're very similar in terms of being big, powerful guards that finish. They're tough. They're aggressive. They're exactly what the Titans need in terms of their offensive line and what they like at that position. So I think that's going to be an awesome, awesome pick. I think you completed your offensive line, and I also think this makes the Titans the best offensive line in the AFC. When you just look at every player on that line and one of the most athletic offensive lines in the AFC. If Corey Levin ends up starting uh, on uh, in, by week one, I think that's exactly what you should expect for them. And he may not start week one because coaches are coaches and they do what they want to do and then they eventually they change their mind. So even Trey Jackson uh, was over Trey Mason and Trey Mason took his job and Trey Jackson is somewhere else now. So uh, yeah. Then, then this is the after that, after Corey Levin, this is where the picks got a little, uh, you know, not good. Uh, Josh Carraway, defensive end slash outside linebacker from TCU. Uh, Production-wise, it wasn't good, guys. He had 44.57 in terms of solo tackle market share, 62.56 in terms of uh, sack market share, and 47.99 in terms of tackle for loss market share. His overall production was only about a 59.30. And... His big issue is just his overall athleticism. So even though his production was kind of eh, his athleticism is worse. He had 11.15 in terms of explosiveness, 44.70 in terms of speed, and 40.80 when it came to flexibility for his size. Best case scenario for Josh Carraway, you could expect him to be a backup, spot starter, anything like that. But I don't think he's ever going to be a long-term starter for you. And based on his uh, production and his athleticism, I mean, when you have a guy who's about an average productive player with <clears throat> below average athleticism, good things don't usually happen with that pick. So, and, and yes, this was a pick taken in the later rounds, but I just wish that they had got a guy who had a little bit more uh, potential to become something more than just a backup because that's usually what gets taken in day three, and I don't agree with that premise. I think you should get backups and people like that, UDFA. Uh, versus getting them in day three when you have opportunities to get guys that can become starters. So that's the one guy that I kind of criticize from that kind of perspective. Uh, and then the next pick we have Brad Seaton, Villanova, tackle. Uh, his big issue is just overall athleticism. He was 43.76 in terms of explosiveness, 32.80 in terms of speed for his size, and 32.54 in terms of flexibility for his size compared to uh, hundreds of uh, offensive tackles since the 1996 NFL draft class and uh, it's not good guys it's not good now he could be a ZBS tackle he has enough explosiveness speed and flexibility to become a ZBS tackle uh, potentially but most of the time through the data that I've done guys that are like this guys that have this weird data profile don't usually do that well you know offensive tackles that don't perform well in every single uh, or at least one athleticism metric tend to struggle tend to not do well so uh, overall I just think this is a depth pick a guy to add to uh, become a backup for you guys but I think you could have done better you could have got some competition in there and again I'm not saying oh get rid of Jake Conklin get rid of Taylor Juan just saying the nature of the NFL is injuries are going to happen and you want to have guys that can come in if an injury happens and, and give you, you know, as good or similar production to what you lost. And uh, and I don't think that that's what Brad Seaton is going to give you. And then the last pick of the draft for the Tennessee Titans is Cal Fani Muhammad, running back out of Cal. Uh, Production-wise, it wasn't that great. He was 30.61 in terms of his uh, uh, market share production. Uh, Age-wise, he was 59.22, which isn't exactly that great either. I think the area where he messes up a bit is athleticism. He had only had a 29.28 in terms of explosiveness, 40.53 in terms of speed, and 47.13 in terms of flexibility for his size. And now some of you guys are going to be like, well, come on, he's a great athlete. Look at his 40. Look at his raw numbers, you know, his short shoulder through count. Again, this, this is athleticism for size. Kalfani Muhammad is about 170-ish pounds. It's, it's easy to run really fast when you're 170-ish pounds. It's easy to, to have a really good short shawl three cone when you weigh that weight. Uh, so that's really the big, you know, sort of issue with him. Other than the production, which the production, again, 30.61, doesn't hit any of the high-quality marks when it comes to running back production. 
but I still think you have some positives there uh, with uh, Muhammad as a committee back. I mean, if you just view him as a guy that the, the way he was used at Cal is they would have the rotation uh, with uh, Trey Watson and uh, a couple other backs there. And Cal Fonny Muhammad would be the guy that would come in in the middle of the game and rip off a 50, 40 yarder because he's, you know, despite the fact that he's not very athletic for his size, his speed is something that can be useful. So, um, so his speed can be useful as a special teamer, as a kick returner, punt returner. I mean, he's going to, he's going to be able to find a role on your team. It's just, he's not a guy that could develop into a long-term starter for you guys. So. That's the only reason why I criticize this pick is just I tend to like to value uh, guys that that can be you know long-term starters at the running back position versus guys that can only be committees and that and that's all they can do. So, um, but that's really the only reason why I criticize that pick. But uh, overall, with the Tennessee Titans draft, just to wrap it up, uh, I I really like this draft. I think you got uh, wide receivers. And offensive, I mean, honestly, the offensive parts of this draft are really impressive. You you get Corey Davis, you get Taewon Taylor, uh, you get Johnny Smith, and you get Corey Levin. I think all those guys are eventually going to become contributors on offense, if not starters on offense at, at one point, either this year or next year. Uh, next year in the case of Johnny Smith. And then, uh, defense-wise... Dory Jackson is, is a cornerback that I like. I don't think you're going to get a very high quality outcome out of him. But he is in an area in terms of his age and overall production that he could be an outlier. That's the best thing I can say for him really is is sometimes guys that are young and, you know, guys like Dory Jackson, you know, guys that are really, really young and raw can kind of develop a bit and then hit that Pro Bowl level. But that's the that's like the highest upside outlier I would not expect him to become a pro bowler but at the very least that's 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 kind of his ultimate potential is that and I think that that's good I mean if he hits that ceiling I mean that's great if he doesn't hit that ceiling I think it's kind of a okay pick they could have done a little bit better getting better value at cornerback but I do like Adora Jackson so I think that's a solid pick Jayon Brown is another guy again I think production wise he could be a starting linebacker for you. He's not going to be amazing, but I think he can give you starting linebacker sort of things. And then the rest of the draft after that point, and Josh Carraway, Brad Seaton, and Cal Funny Muhammad are basically depth picks, picks to fill out the roster, and picks that I don't really think are ever going to become major contributors on your team. Uh, so I like this draft. Again, I don't like to do grades or anything else like that. But I do think this draft class is going to do really well for the Titans. And this could be a class that puts them into the playoffs this year, by the way, if you can get really good contributions from your top guys early, which I think is possible. Uh, so this concludes the Common Man Football Show. Uh, my name is James Coburn. You can follow my work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics to get uh, more information about this sort of stuff. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment, man. If, you, if you're having issues kind of understanding some of the stuff that I'm doing or you're curious about this work and where I got it and all that stuff, I'm happy to be as transparent as possible when it comes to this information because you know, most of the stuff I'm doing is anybody has access to this stuff. It's just a matter of collecting it and analyzing it. So, uh, so yeah, so be sure to, to contact me if you want to contact me and I will see you on the next show. Peace.